In the year 1848, the United States stood at a crossroads. Fresh from victory in the Mexican-American War, the U.S. had annexed territories known as the Mexican Cession. But for many Americans, that was not enough. They yearned to extend their dominion southward, to claim the entirety of Mexico as their own. Yet, as history unfolded, this grand vision remained unfulfilled. To understand this pivotal moment, we must first explore how the two nations came to an agreement. By 1847, Mexico found itself outnumbered and largely occupied by American forces. Conventional warfare was no longer an option. So, it entered into negotiations with the U.S. through envoy Nicholas Trist. Trist, however, was considered by many to be too sympathetic to the Mexican cause, and he negotiated a settlement that fell short of American desires. Nevertheless, the desire for resolution was paramount. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, signed on February 2, 1848, marked a turning point. Mexico surrendered half of its territory, including its claim to Texas, which was now defined by the Rio Grande as the new border. In return, the U.S. paid Mexico $15 million and assumed debts owed by the Mexican government to American citizens. Trist, upon his return, expressed profound shame as an American. He was even fired for his role in the treaty. One reason annexation didn't proceed was the potential to upset the delicate political balance. Mexico had abolished slavery more than a decade before the war. The status of newly acquired territories as either slave or free states became a contentious issue. Northern states vehemently opposed the expansion of slavery, while southern states advocated for it. Each state enjoyed equal representation in the Senate, and annexing Mexico could have tipped the scales decisively. President Polk himself was pro-slavery, but his party had suffered a setback in the midterms. The House was now controlled by the Whig Party, forcing Polk to seek compromise rather than swift annexation. Moreover, many U.S. politicians held prejudiced views, fearing an influx of Spanish-speaking, non-white Catholics. South Carolina Senator John C. Calhoun famously remarked, We have never dreamt of incorporating into our union any but the Caucasian race, the free white race. The financial toll of the war also loomed large. With over 12,000 American casualties and a war cost of $100 million, the United States found itself unable to sustain a protracted and expensive conflict. What had begun as a promise of a quick victory against an inferior foe had transformed into a long and costly endeavor. Another crucial factor was the lack of unanimous support for the Mexican War. Many Americans, particularly in the North, viewed it as an unjust aggression. Annexing all of Mexico would have intensified this opposition and further divided the nation. Lastly, we must consider the concept of manifest destiny, which swept through the United States in the 1840s. This belief in a divine mission to expand westward was powerful, driving the acquisition of Texas and eventually leading to the annexation of Mexican territories. In the end, it seems that destiny had its way, but the nation ultimately stopped short of fully realizing its ambitions. In the annals of history, the United States did not annex all of Mexico. A convergence of factors, political, economic, social, and moral, shaped this decision. As we look back, we see how the complexities of the past continue to resonate in the present. In this quest for expansion, the United States found its limits, and in doing so, redefined its destiny.